What's up everybody? Today, we're gonna to be going over 16 gauge aluminum outside corner joints. What kind of problems you might run into, what kind of trouble you might currently be having, and how you can succeed. Let me get geared up, and let's get into it. Now that we're geared up, let's talk about what we're gonna be working on today. Here, we have a 16 gauge aluminum part. It's made of two pieces. We have a top plate here, and then this bottom form. Our top plate is receded back a little bit, which is giving us that nice outside corner joint that we'll be welding today. Now, the first thing I wanna get into with this is talk about you know, problems you might be having or problems that we might run into. No, we don't like to talk about our problems, but we need to do the work through our issues. So the very first thing is prep. All I do for this is I take a rag, a clean rag, no oil or anything on it, put some alcohol on it, I clean the joint, I clean outside of the joint, that way no contaminants can get pulled into the weld pool while we're welding. The second thing I prep is my wire, which today we're using 4043, 16th wire, and I clean that down, that way that if there's anything on this, it doesn't get shoved into our weld pool. Now, the second issue that you might be having is fitment. For this, we want a really nice tight fit up. There are welding applications where you want a gap. For this, we absolutely do not want that. We want it to be tight. So the first thing that you're probably running into is you might have some blow through. Um, other things that can cause blow through is too slow a travel speed, or your machine's turned up too high and you're just dumping too much heat in your joint and just plowing right through the other end. Now, another issue you might run into is, believe it or not, not enough penetration, which is different than blow through. Because with blow through, you're just gonna have a giant hole and you're gonna have to repair it or you're just gonna have to scrap the part. We wanna avoid that. Now let's get back into talking about this full penetration. For this, we need full penetration. You might not always need it, but some things call out for it. So for this specifically, uh, what we're looking to do is weld the entire joint while having a full pen weld all the way through. So today we're gonna to be using HTP's Invertag 221. Let's go over here to our settings. We are set to AC, 60 amps. We're at 170 for our frequency and 70 on the balance. Let's go over to our torch setup here. We have the CK Worldwide Flex Lock Torch. I'm using a Edge Welding Cups GL6Q. It is a quartz cup. It is phenomenal for welding aluminum or when you're welding on high amperage. And our electrode is gonna be a CK Worldwide's Laser Tungsten 16. For our shielding gas, we're gonna be using 100% argon. And for our CFH, I have it set to 20. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is check our fit up, make sure everything's fit nice and tight how it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to tack this piece on all of the bend lines. Now, this is a good way to check our settings because we'll see how it wets the parent material. As you see me welding here, the first thing we're gonna keep in mind is one, body positioning. I uh, keep enough space for my torch hand arm to move in towards my body and I keep my forearm up on the table so that way I have leverage and I have enough space to pivot and move across the joint. Doing this will allow you to not get yourself trapped against your own body and that way you won't end up in a tight position where you become uncomfortable and you're not able to follow through with what you're doing. Another way that I keep myself uh, while I'm sitting on a table like this to make sure I can follow through is I take my piece and I put it on a 45. Our body's natural way of your arm sitting up on the table like that, if you take your arm and pivot, it almost matches that same degree. And that way you'll be able to fall to the joint comfortably without getting tight or ending up on an odd angle. Next thing is gonna be our torch angle. I keep mine in about maybe a 15 degree push. I almost wanna be straight on, but we need a good line of sight. So I just give it a little bit of push and that'll also help move the puddle along as we progress forward. Another important thing with line of sight is you wanna keep your head in front of the puddle. 
That way you can see what you're working on. And the most important thing is wherever the head goes, your body follows. Also pay attention uh, the position of my wire. I keep it parallel to the joint. That way we have no spillover on either side of the joint and we have a nice even fill. And just as I said about the tacks before, on the starts and stops, make sure you come off slow. That way you don't end up forming a crater crack. Now, as I move down the joint, our piece is gonna get hotter, so I am gonna have to feather off of the pedal a little bit, just to control my heat. And the way I look at that is maintaining the same diameter puddle all the way through. And you can see that cleaning action stays nice and even all the way through the entire time that we are welding. Now, to know that I'm getting full penetration, I watch the puddle sink a little bit into the parent material, and then I add my filler to build it up and add strength to the joint. To maintain consistency in my beads, I watch how much filler I'm pushing in, and I watch that build up, and I know it's okay to move, and then I step to the front of my last bead to keep a consistent dime stack. Here is the outside of the piece that we welded. Let's say it looks pretty good. Nice consistent cleaning action. Pretty consistent dimes. Quite happy with it. All right, so here's the inside of our joint. This is kind of what we're looking for. We have nice, pretty consistent, even, full penetration throughout the entire joint. Looks pretty good to me. All the parts are passable. They're going to work for what we need them for. And all in all, it was a good success. So I'm hoping that with these settings and maybe uh, the technique that I used, and that you have a better understanding of what's going to happen when you're welding uh, thin aluminum parts. Um, you know, outside uh, corner joints are common in a manufacturing environment. Or maybe you're at home and you got something that you are welding where it's that kind of fit up. Or maybe you just want to grab some uh, scrap or some pieces and just try it out just to get some uh, experience under your belt. Either way, I think this is going to really help you succeed. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.